Get ready to match the stars. Greg Morris, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Ryder, Anitra Ford, Richard Dawson, and Betty White as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 76. And now here's the star of Match Game 76. Thank you. I didn't even meet this lady backstage to say hello to her. May I say hello to her in the traditional way? Since she's the new kid on the block. <laughs> hello, Come Anita Boyd. Yeah. <laughs> you see this pretty face on the Price is Right, and you see this pretty face. <laughs> you got a movie called Countdown, right? Countdown at Cusini, yes. Yes. You see this pretty face in Encino. <laughs> And you see this pretty face. Uh, Wait a minute, let's cover it up. <laughs> it Charles got Just a Broadway skip hit, over and me. we're all very happy for him. And welcome from Mary Tyler Moore. Listen, hey. the audio is different today. It's nice, I'm not complaining, but it's different, isn't it? I sound so masculine and virile. Oh, it's just... Yeah. Oh. Maybe. Nothing for the bridesmaids. <laughs> let's that's say hello to our two players, Marcus Lewis and Karen Tripp. Now, Marcus here is our current champ. How much money have you won, Marcus? $600. $600? That's right. And what are you going to do with all that loot? Bills. Bills. <laughs> Pay your bills. Pay those bills. Okay. Now, we started this game last time we were together. Karen had her first round question, matched one of our celebrities. And if you're ready, Karen, are you ready? Yes. Okay. We'll uh, finish this first round with Marcus's question in a minute or so. But first, yes. Or you. For round one, there it is, Marcus. It's all yours. Everybody plays. Marcus, listen carefully. Harvey said, "Yeah, mm -hmm. Harvey said my blind date last night was really masculine." <laughs> Harvey said that. Harvey said that my blind date was really masculine. When I went to pick her up, she wasn't quite ready. She was blanking. <laughs> when I went to pick her up, she wasn't quite ready. She was blanking. Do you know, I know there's a wonderful answer. Oh, there's a this. perfectly wonderful answer. Yes, and I, I just... I can't give it to you because that's no, against the rules. I know but... it. I just, if I could just think of what it was. Everybody ready in the first tier here? They're all ready in the first tier. You're the best. Tier. Charles, I see you forgot your CBS pass again and they had to pin one on yes. you. Oh, I know what it, Oh, I know what it is. You got it, right? She was, uh, yes. Uh, what is that? Uh, when I, she was masculine. When I went to pick her up, she wasn't quite ready. She was blank. She, oh, I, I got it. Just took me a minute. Oh, it just goodness. Well, I, you know, I've never been a quick thinker. Now we'll come over here to Marcus Lewis. Harvey said my blind date was last night was really masculine. When I went to pick her up, she wasn't quite ready. She was blanking. Shaving. Shaving. He's got it. Isn't it marvelous the way the audience responds right. when you give what they think is the oh. correct answer? I mean, oh. I mean that was, that's a good answer that, that Marcus gave there. Greg, what do you I, say, Greg? I ain't, I ain't never been on with girls like that. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but as my wife, George, said this morning... Oh, uh, yeah. I said exercising. Exercising! Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> My All first right. day, leave me yeah. alone. Right. What do you say? You poo-pooed me, right? You made you, you made fun of me? Yeah, because... You attacked me for no, my incredible... Only, uh, only because you have a slow brain, that's all. That's Never your, mind. Yeah. The, it's the story of the rabbit and the hare. Right. Oh, no, the hare and the turtle, pardon me. Shaving! Shaving! <laughs> it's the rabbit. I'm going to act my answer out. Yes, sir. Well, you don't have to say, sir, till you see the act. Oh, all right. But stink. Go ahead. I said shaving and not her legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know if it's an award-winning performance, but... It, hello, Anitra. Here's Hi. your first shot at it now. You've never done this before. But and I know Harvey well. You know Harvey well? Yeah, I don't wear this suit for nothing. 
Oh. <laughs> I said shaving. Shaving. Okay. Yes. I'm very big on waistcoats, too. They say I wear them all the time. I'm not as big as you are, but what the heck? We can't have everything. Um, Harvey said, my blind date last night was really masculine. When I went to pick her up, she wasn't quite ready. She was shaving, according to Marcus Lewis. So what? Uh, what according to you, Marcus Aurelius? You remember when I said I wanted a Ford in the White House? Yes. This is the one I was talking about. <laughs> shaving. I'm voting for you, Richard. Now, Betty, Listen, looking for a shave here. Just before, just before I, I can, who was here last week in this place? In that seat. Oh. Yes. Why? Well, look, this is, this is oh, all a mess. Oh, dear me. This is, look at oh, this. Oh, it's all falling Look apart. at the entire, would you hold that fanny, fanny flag? Oh, look, look, look at this that. entire, look was that fanny thing. flag? Fanny flag. Or gargantuan. A, look at this, who her there? bulbs are showing. <laughs> Isn't that I mean, awful? I just don't know. Yes. Listen, I'd you... like to thank the Academy for this award. <laughs> Listen, the fact that the set is falling apart, is CBS trying to tell us something? <laughs> uh, wait a second, we got new curtains in the back that are oh, adorable. Yes. Yeah, I see we got new curtains see the back new curtains, there. They're how very, pretty? They're very pretty. My father always said like I had them. a beautiful smile. <laughs> <laughs> what's your answer? Yeah, what's your answer? Shaving! Shaving! He got it together, didn't he? Okay, we go to round two. Karen, it's up to you. B, please. B? Now, you matched one celebrity in your first round. That was uh, Chuck. Charles. Chuck, as Chuck. we say. Yesterday, Glenn Campbell drank a whole six-pack of beer. Yikes. And then he sang, By the time I get to Phoenix, I'll be blanking. I just saw you're not playing. A whole. Yeah. Tomorrow, not tomorrow. Oh, all right. Okay. I went to the opening of Charles' play, The Bell of Amherst, in Boston, and it was absolutely thrilling. Isn't that the most exciting thing you ever saw? Thank you. Let's see. Everybody ready down here? No. Just wonderful. The Bell of Amherst. Marvelous evening in the theater. Okay. It certainly is. Go. <laughs> Hello, Kara. Yesterday, Glenn Campbell drank a whole six pack of beer and then he sang, By the time I get to Phoenix, I'll be blanking, tinkling. <laughs> She came up with the definitive answer. That's terrible. Really? Well, Glenn's a friend of mine. He can hold his liquor. <laughs> <laughs> but not from here to Phoenix. He'll be tinkling. Ah. <laughs> okay. Now, Brett. I felt there were two definitive answers. There were two? Yes. I said by the time he got to Phoenix, he was belching his little heart out. Belching his little heart out. <laughs> Now, Karen, Thank you've you, got sweetheart. to match the remaining three celebrities to stay in the competition. Anitra. Well, I guess I underestimated the man. He was barfing. He was <laughs> barfing, so that means Marcus wins the game. Yep, he wins. Anitra. Okay. Here we go again, Marcus. You're going to have another shot at it, so hang around here for a moment or so while we say goodbye to Karen Tripp. It was a pleasure meeting you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, for being with us. We've got gifts for you, together with our best wishes. Karen Tripp, and while she's spinning off, we'll spin these messages for you. All right, Karen. Here's Marcus Lewis. He's going to have another shot at it. He had one before, and, uh, well, you didn't go all the way with it, did you? No, I didn't. You want to go all the way this time? The stuffed turkey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stuffed turkey was your undoing, wasn't it? Okay, Marcus, you've got 7000 You could win over $5,000 more right here now. Let's get on with it now. We polled a recent studio audience. What? Oh, I said 7000 He's got 700 I just gave you a lot of money there. Quite a difference. And you took it. You didn't even correct me. Get off this stage. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, here we go, Mark. As you got 700, and uh, we pulled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Daniel Blank. Now, the answer they gave most frequently is worth $500. Remember, if you match it. Then if you match their second most frequently given response, you get 250 The third gets you $100. Now, let's see what kind of answers we're going to have from our celebrities here. You may choose any three you wish, one at a time. Richard. Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone. Charles. Danny Webster. Daniel Webster. He knew him well, so he calls him Danny. Well, Brett. Brett. What about Daniel and the Lion? Daniel and the Lion. Well, heavens, it was number... Daniel Three, and the Lion's Den. Yes, Danny, Daniel and the Lion. Well, there they are, Daniel and the Lion, Daniel Webster, Daniel Boone. You may choose one of those. Do you have any other ideas that seem more attractive to you? No, I don't. You don't? You want one of those? Boone. You want Boone? <laughs> the audience, so far, they have been pretty good in judging what's a good answer and what's not such a good answer. And I gather from their uh, reaction that you've picked the winner, Daniel Boone. If you're wrong, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Let's find out if Daniel Boone is up there. May we see the $100 number? Daniel in the see lion's that? den. See, Brett? Very good. Yeah. Right. All right, let's see if Daniel Boone with his coonskin cap is hiding under the $250 number. Daniel Webster is there. Okay. Last chance, Daniel. Come out, come out, wherever you are. You picked up another 500, you have $1,200, but you're going to play for the 10 times that 500 or 5,000. And to collect, though, you've got to match one celebrity exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll go with Charles Nelson Riley. Charles. Get ready, Charles. Oh. Charles is always ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now swing around here and face me, if you would, please, Marcus. Here's a little number worth $5,000 to you if you get your ESP going and get on the same wavelength with Charles. London blank. London blank. Could you move your pens down there? <laughs> Charles is trying to choose the no, I, most I, logical answer he can think of, <laughs> or anyone else can think of. Finish, Charles. Okay. Get your ESP going now and think, concentrate on Charles Nelson Riley. Give us an answer which you think will match his. London blank. Bridges. London Bridge. Okay. Charles, he says that'll match it for 5000 What do you say? He's a teacher, right, Marcus? Yes. Well, yes. oh, I just thought I'd ask that. <laughs> yes. Tony, just to show you that I remember. Now, show what you wrote, Miss Betty White, of the Emmy Award this year. Okay. What did you show? I, Sh jo show. I can't show. I she no, she away. wrote London Ellsberg as a help. <laughs> well, we were saying Daniel Everyone Ellsberg knows it's work. London Bridge. London <laughs> $6,200. Okay, congratulations to you. How do you feel? Funny. I feel really funny. You feel funny? I feel funny. You got a funny feeling Not in the pit of your stomach? Funny, yeah. just funny. You just feel <laughs> a little strange. You got $6,200. Money no, makes no. you feel funny? Yeah, it does. This is not from a funny money. This is straight money, Marcus. No, this is real. This is real, yeah. This is real. Well, you did get your ESP going between Thank you two. God he doesn't like London broil. I would yeah. have been all dead. Well, you know, the answer that was in my head was London, England. London, England, London Bridge. No? London what? London, England. Well, you were wrong. Well, anyway. You're going to play another game now, and you got the money, Marcus. Let's meet Sandy Fox. Here we go. Okay, pal. 
Now, you two know each other. So, Sandy, we'll welcome you and ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm married. I work as a dental assistant. In the summertime, I teach swimming to little children, and I also train dogs. Mm-hmm. And uh, what kind of dogs do you train? Any kind? Any kind. What do you have? Is it a BD? We have Bichon Frises. Oh, those are very rare. <laughs> yeah. But they're cute little white fluffy dogs, and uh, they're very lovable, a little nervous, but great watchdogs. Mm -hmm. Soon as there's the slightest sound, they, go, rah, 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 rah. they wake up in the middle of the night. You, you do all obedience training? Right? Yes. And where do you do that? At people's homes. Oh, you make house calls? Yeah. <laughs> very few people do that these days. We, you know, we have St. Bernard. Oh, that's right, you do. He weighs 250 pounds, also is a great uh, watchdog. Yeah. Anytime robbers come, you just watch us and take all our <laughs> Yeah. Well, Sandy, we'll wish you the best of luck. We'll get Thank this you. game in a, going in a moment or so, but first we've got to do a little business with America. Today's consolation prizes are first from Manhattan, a wardrobe of nature knit men's shirts unusually comfortable because they're knit of a patented fabric of mostly cotton. And who is Tripan? The top draw is the middle prize and the bottom warm. It's like having three appliances in one Tripan from Hoover. And a radio, and a supply of Seabreeze to help remove all the dirt for a clean complexion. So every time you wash, wash again with Seabreeze. Now remember, a bird in the hand is worth two in the blank. As you'll discover when Match Game 76 star and Gene Rayburn continues in a minute. Hello there. You missed a marvelous interlude by the Budapest String Quartet. They were playing their violin and the cello and the bass and everything, weren't they? <laughs> now, are you both ready? New game, folks. Here we go, round one. Sandy? A. A. This is it. Mrs. Howard Cosell said, This year, Santa Claus gave me something I can really use. He gave me a blank. That's what Mrs. Howard Cosell said. He, she sounds just like Mr. Howard Cosell, doesn't yes, she? Yes, she do. How are you, little cutie singular? This Say year, singular. Santa Claus gave me something I can really use. He gave me a blank. He gave me a blank. He gave me a blank. Well, I sort of like my answer. Have you noticed that I'm not speaking to Betty? <laughs> Have you noticed I don't care? <laughs> Do you know why I'm not speaking why? to you? Why? Because I'm sulking. Why? What did she do to you? Because she got nominated for another Emmy. In, as a Best Supporting Actress. It's just depressing for me, you know. It's, it's terribly who depressing. You know. <laughs> it's who you yes, know. Yes, but it, it has, it's all politics. has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Betty, you've been at it again, haven't you? <laughs> you really are a depraved say. woman, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Dear me. Wow. Well, you know, if you'd been married to Alan as long as she <laughs> has, you have to get your kicks any old way. Are you ready, my dear? <laughs> Mrs. Howard Cosell said, this year's Santa Claus gave me something I can really use. He gave me a... Earplug? Earplug is very good, my dear. Isn't that a good one? Don't you think that's a good one? Is that a good one, Greg? It's been a long time since I've been here, and this crowd is crazy. <laughs> no, that's a, good, that's a good answer. I know it's a good answer. Mine's bad. Oh, a new really? husband. A new husband. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. Yes. I like that. <laughs> what do you say? Well, I figured she could get her own earplugs, you know? Yeah. So I thought she needed something a little longer lasting than that. He gave her a divorce. <laughs> That's interesting, too, yeah. <laughs> you think so? Oh, this is very revealing. I Dr. was going Freud, to go with earplugs. Yes. That's why I asked singular or plural. Right. See, earplug singular is not so good because you'll find the, uh, the good ear. Yes. So I said a muzzle. A oh. muzzle is good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think we have three very interesting answers up there, Sandy. You probably don't think so because none of them match your answer. <laughs> Let's see if Anitra Ford matches. Has Chaz ever been married? Chaz? I don't think he's ever been married, no. Well, he understands. Muzzle. See that? Muzzle, yes. He does understand. That's now, if we can only find out how to spell it, because we've had our first fight. <laughs> Is it L-E or E-L? Who knows? L-E. Oh, who yes. cares? Like perfect. Oh, Chuck. 
Chuck. Chuck. Yes. Mrs. <clears throat> Howard Costell said this year Santa Claus gave me something I didn't really use. He gave me a... A Jewish symbol for good luck. <laughs> muzzle. A muzzle. <laughs> muzzle Just for my friends on yes. Fairfax Avenue. All right. <laughs> I work very small group. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Beverly Drive. <laughs> No, Miss Betty, honey. Well, see, when I heard Sandy was a dog trainer, I thought that's why we're all saying muzzle. Oh, muzzle. Yeah, Sandy. Gosh, muzzle would have been very good for you if you'd Great. said that. So, I'm sorry you didn't score him with your first round. We'll see how he does with his first round or in a moment or so. But right now, we got this for you, friends. We have to cool it right here for a while. But you will return tomorrow or whatever the, the next day is. <laughs> I don't know what day today is. <laughs> I thank you for being with us today or any day. And I thank each and every one of you. You were just splendid. Is there anything I can do for anyone before we leave? We have yeah. a few oh, seconds. Yeah. Do your Louis Armstrong impression. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are. When the shark had a lovely oh, tea. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how wonderful. I hope you're going to join us next time for Match Game 76. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 76. A Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of the CBS stations.